everybody that's back there. Y'all come on out and join us. We're going to have a hoot nanny. The Lilith Fair was rolling across America, forging new ground for women in music. The artists say the tour was distinctly different than any other tours they'd been on. It's bringing out the best in everybody. We all have our idiosyncrasies and we all have negative things. You know, everybody does. But this tour isn't like that. He said he could see through me. Well, I spent four years of my life crossed straight to the higher mind. I got my papers. The all-girl tour was selling more tickets than anyone ever expected, but Sarah wanted to give more than music to each place they played. She arranged for one dollar of every ticket sold to be donated to a local charity, and Sarah McLaughlin's vision for a community of women artists had been realized. Okay, breakfast from my place. We're moving in. All right. They were having the time of their lives out on the road, in part because they had each other. Usually, the road is a lonely and isolating place. It's kind of a strange journey that we've chosen, and we're all moving so quickly uh, within our own careers that we really get the opportunity to um, to connect on any level. This is for your own posterity. Okay, nice smile, ladies. Do me one more. Do me one. 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 Usually, you're a bit of an astronaut out on the road, kind of alone and um, cut off from most of the world. So it's nice to have a little traveling community. While you're out in this sort of um, dangling environment. People's lives move on, people have children, people buy houses, and there's a certain, you know, removedness from it all. We'll see his tricks. While some of the artists depend on the telephone as a lifeline to combat the loneliness of the road, Cheryl Crow has a friend she takes wherever Damn. she goes. Yes. Down. All the way down. You got distracted. Down. See? Well, here, here it goes. Good down. <laughs> down. Check it out. Oh, yeah. oh, he's a little camera shy. Hey, down. Oh, you do a good boy. Yep. He's been all yeah. over. The rigors of the road, 30 cities in 40 days, is exhausting and disorienting. Like all the artists at Lilith Fair, Lisa Loeb spends a great deal of her life touring. going by and it's the next week and then it's the next month. The artists say at Lilith they were in the company of other women who understood the demands of life on the road. Sean Colvin, now in her early 40s, spent most of the last decade touring. Sally came home to her favorite room. Sally sat down in the kitchen. She opened a book and a box of tools. For a long time, I only knew men in the music business. And the women friends that I had were getting married and having, you know, and I was on the road all the time. And it's just so cool to be hanging out with women who make you feel like you're not an oddball, you know? The artists say one of the major sacrifices is that it's difficult to have a relationship when you spend your life on tour. Relationships are hard enough to maintain when you're there, when you're present, but when you're gone a lot and when you're in the public eye, it is difficult for somebody who's involved with you to, no matter how evolved they are, to have the confidence to feel um, certain and secure in a relationship. You have a whole family on the road and you experience a lot that the other person never sees. With the endless months of touring, the camaraderie of band members is the closest thing you get to family. And choosing so carefully. <laughs>
Sarah McLaughlin found a way around the difficulty of having a relationship on the road. In February 1997, she married her drummer, Ashwin Sood. I mean, we fell madly in love, and nothing could stop that, even though I certainly wanted to think that, no, this will go away. This isn't right. <laughs> but it was very right, um, and it, it just continued to get stronger. Perhaps no artist understands the price a woman pays for spending so much time touring better than the legendary matriarch of life on the road, Emmy Lou Harris. There's a we rose from my dream. She has spent most of the past 25 years going from city to city with her band and somehow raising two daughters. There are a lot of things that my kids could call me on, you know, that, that I could really be on the heavy guilt trip because I wasn't there a lot of times that I should have been there, that I wish I'd been there. The artists at Lilith say some of the most magical moments of the tour were spent with Emmy Lou. She walks in the room and it's like the oral tradition of music, you know, she's passing her songs down and teaching you how to play things. It's like you're speaking a language and you're meeting other people that you know are going to understand you the language of music and the language of being on the road. On this road trip, the women enjoyed the rare opportunity to get to know artists they admire, but rarely get the chance to see. I think most of us have been following each other for a long time, and one of the hazards of being a touring artist, a heavy touring artist, is that you never get to see anybody else play. Meredith Brooks says seeing Sarah McLachlan play at Lilith was especially meaningful. She credits Sarah with rekindling her passion for music. Meredith had always believed that making music was her true purpose in life. But she had lost her inspiration. She was having second thoughts. Lay it down, lay it down. Lay it all down. Let your wife... I didn't think what I had to say was going to be something people necessarily wanted to hear. And I thought, if I can't do what I'm really here to do, my real purpose, then it would be okay not to do this anymore. Meredith barely listened to music for a five-year period until she was given a Sarah McLachlan CD. One day my manager walked up and said, look, I know you don't, but would you please listen to this? And it was Sarah McLachlan fumbling towards ecstasy. Your love is better than ice cream. Every song on that album drove me insane. I, I wore my CD out. I, I just wore it out. That's what happened with my writing, and then I wrote Blurring the Edges, and then boom, 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 like that. Meredith Brooks' first solo album, Blurring the Edges, hit the stores in May of 1997. When Sarah heard it, she signed Meredith onto Lilith as an unknown artist. Soon after the tour started, Meredith's record went platinum just three months after its release. Next, Jewel goes from living in her car to living out her dream. It's unreal. It's like being given a second chance in life. Later, the press changes its tune about Lilith Fair. They had a lineup where there are no R&B acts, no soul singers. When Behind the Music continues.